Hi y'all, Katsumi here. Welcome to my Lego library. Today, the day has come. Y'all have all been waiting for it. Just kidding, literally no one has cared. <laughs> no one has asked, but I'm doing it. I'm finally tackling the review of the Nintendo Entertainment System. Lego set number seven. Bro, okay, ignore my setup. Set number 71374, 2,646 pieces. By far the largest set I've ever owned. The second most would be, oh, maybe Dagobah Jedi Training, which I just did at a thousand. And I'm really excited because I've been playing Mario Kart and been, you know, uh, re diving into Mario as a gaming universe. Let's do the box tour manually in my hands. So here on the front, we have a view of the entire set. They already say 18 plus, it's 18 plus, and it has the gray grizzly at the bottom. Coming around to the top, we have the game, the remote, just the console. The actual size of reference is Mario with a few of the stairs. This side is literally empty. That's actually so boring. This side has a little bit of the level over on the black background. The bottom, I'm gonna assume it's boring. And then the back has another view. <coughs> OMG, should I try the other languages? I think I should, let's see. Old school rolling mechanism. Mechanise, 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 hmm. mechanisme? No, that's Spanish. Mechanise, <laughs> the Hulmont Heto. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with that. The R's are a little hard in French, can't even lie. Mechanismo giratorio de la vieja escuela. Okay, life-size controller, manette de tel real, hell, hell, control de tamaño real. Okay, there it is, the life-size remote. And insert game pack. Insert, it's all, mm hmm <laughs> la cartouche, inserta el cartucho, cartucho del juego. Okay, very unfamiliar words for me, but I think I gave my best shot. Oh my gosh, these are so cute. I need to cut these out. These are just really cute. Oh my gosh, they're so special. I'm actually so excited. Whoa! Okay, let's, why don't we go ahead and build it then? Uh. Here are what the extra pieces to collect, including one of each one extra of each printed piece uh obsessed with that there's technically a printed piece as well it came with an orange brick separator there were three stickers the instruction manuals of course have lots of information about the game and the designers in the beginning and it was divided in two halves so technically two people could have built it at the same time they also feature the newer spine which actually lays flat open when you open it and period here it is built and I'm in love with it, I think. By the way, this is already a five-star set. Let me go ahead and say it at the outset because they slayed. And I've been continuing to dive into the world of Mario as a video game universe, including playing Super New Super Mario Bros. DS, New Super Mario Bros. 2, New Super Mario Bros. Wii. I'm a New Super Mario Bros. kind of person, so actually this game itself, uh, never played her. And I fear she is too old for me. Like, she's gonna be boring. <laughs> But perhaps I'll have to try one day. Now let me dive right into the game cartridge. Hello, like literally that's so cute. This is literally so cute. I'm holding it in my hand. I'm holding a, a pretty life-size game cartridge with the original Super Mario Bros. for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Here are two of the three stickers in the entire set, which, I mean, are you just look like, if we just look at those details over there being all printed, I mean, we'll get into it, but it's pretty iconic. So here's the game cartridge. It's literally green on the inside. It's the details for me. It literally looks like a little computer chip. It's gonna be like computer chips in here, beep, boop, boop, up. Um, it has a little thumb tab. Again, I never had an NES or this kind of TV or anything, but I'm pretty tech savvy enough to do this review. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure this is a thumb tab or grip place. The fact that they included this cartridge that goes into the console and clicks down. So that was the cartridge, love that. The controller is pretty life-size as well. A little D-pad going on. I did go to a thrift store actually and see an NES and ask to look at it. 
and I did click the little control and I saw that it's it's pretty close. It's pretty close in size. The NES might be a little bit bigger. The TV, I'm not sure. In general, I feel like it's literally almost dramatically old. Like it's would this really be able to play Mario on it? It looks like it would only be able to play black and white like type stuff. Not sure though. Not you know. I wasn't alive and my parents weren't playing video games at that time, so I don't know. Anywho. Back to the controller, it has this long pneumatic tube that connects to the console itself. Um, can we talk about this mechanism? It's two alligator clips, and it's attaching to two seek snap clips. Like what? How does that even? And it works. Like, does, is that in system? Or do they just have to get creative and find something that kind of sticks? It's not like a real Lego snap, if you will. It's kind of like a suggestion of a, of a grip. Um, but I mean, that's hella creative, and that's just touching the iceberg in terms of the creativity. I mean, I would ask for them to be pressable, but that would just be like begging for an extra ice cube on the most perfect golden lemonade on the hottest summer day ever. Like, so print, 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 uh, double print, 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 <laughs> all prints, what? That's so cute. Tiled off on the sides. This is definitely a UCS style, um, like, you know, display the details on all four sides, if you will. Next, let's look at, let me go in order of the building process. Okay, so here's the console. Honestly, it's like, <laughs> I'm just obsessed with this set. It is tiled off entirely on the top. Uh, a grill with more tiles, black tiles, a black strip down the side. Look at this vintage IO. Like, I couldn't even, I'm tech savvy, but I don't even know what these are for. Like, okay, I do know that this is video, audio and video. Let's talk about this real quick. It is literally upside down. This is a one by four plate with the studs pointing down into one of those uh, little wall pieces. Insert a picture here. And then it also holds like the little arc ways for these little things to stick out. The level of engineering and like thinking about the use of the Lego bricks in abstract and new ways needs to be studied. They snapped entirely. Even with something like this, getting these little dimples on the side by using the smooth hinge mechanism, that one, and then you just, you just close it just like that. A little tile on the end of that and you just close it. Like, they could have used a like some sort of brick, maybe? Maybe the 2x2 uh, two two slope brick. It wouldn't have looked as good as this. They really went that extra mile with that. At the bottom, you start with this big, huge 16x16 16 16 plate. The front, we have more print, printed tiles, into an entertainment system. The way they, another use of creative brick bending, if you will. Um, the fact that they were able to get this little lip, again, using one of those little wall pieces, you literally have to build this whole sub-assembly and look how it's kind of complex for what you get at the end it's just that little lip on the outside so in love with that um player one and two again printed power and reset a little um oh so would this be the led indicator perhaps yes i think so so pretty brick built but so many plates too in there it's so fun it was so fun building it and you would place the bricks and random color pieces in the most random places and be like, what? Why is that going? Why is that going there? And then as you continued, you realize that they were like so intentionally building such a structure to support the whole thing and just make this continuous flow of building. The small things, adding an in-gate piece here so that you can easily lift off this entire uh, large plate to get a closer look at the inner working mechanisms. Here's a cartridge. You can see it has actual tires so that it actually softly, you know, is guided in and has little red stoppers and the Technic mechanisms that um, make it happen. And then here's what I mean about random colors. Like what? That just looks like a mess. It looks like, um, you know, random. But the placement is so intentional and you just, you realize later like, oh, okay, that's what they were building. The fact that this is tiled off so that this large plate rests on it nicely. What? Okay, so the mechanism, let's talk about it. Okay, it did it there. It's, it's not that reliable. You know, this, oh, here it is. This piece slides up and down and like it gets locked into place and then it's supposed to, okay, so here when I press it back down, it's supposed to slide a little bit, is it forward or backward? In order to, you know, allow it to go back up again. 
it's just not the most reliable mechanism. They could have slayed a little harder there. You know what, that's the one critique I'll give it, is that this mechanism that, I mean, I'm so glad they even tried, but it could be worked on. It can be improved. I've seen it, at least it works in the down way pretty consistently. So you put your cartridge in, it locks down, you're ready to play. Let me reattach that covering. Oh, I revealed the Easter egg by accident by letting it fall out of my hand. So again, just in a moment, you know, you don't have to take it off to look at the inside, but the fact that they included this little thumb tab for you to do that, that's sweet. Okay, here's the Easter egg. And it's a mini level. I was like, what the hell? Why are all these blue pieces? What are we doing here? Until it came to the end. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. It's like a mini level. Um, there's like little pipes. In fact, okay, I do know a little bit about the game. Is this, I feel like this is a warp zone where you can teleport to other worlds uh, quicker. And then we have a mini Mario. The way they like have these little platforms on tiny little pieces with a bar and you stick the bar in just truly adorable. It's for the builder the way there's so many details and little like easter eggs like this um adding to the experience which would you know because this would otherwise have been just boring brick building just for the structure and here's the cap for that and you would never know unless you told unless you knew unless you had it yourself each piece by itself they're very balanced with each other like the tv the console the controller and the game they all have a similar level of care put into their design so love that so here's the tv it is truly the centerpiece the piece that has the stones of the entire set and you're looking at this lever like uh oh, that's kind of ugly it's sticking out but then you twist it you twist it back like a box and the level starts playing like what that is so they really did not have to go so hard on this and the level plays and you have a whole entire cute little level including this little thing at the end so he's going through the level, he's playing, there's Goombas, there's little sh um, Koopa shells, there's some question blocks, star powers, a super mushroom, or is that a one-up? Not again, not too familiar with the game. The little rolling hills in the back, the final staircase, a, co a coin, and then his starting pipe. Ah, obsessed. And he doesn't even fall, he has like invincible powers. You build these tall strips of game footage with all these tiles and all these special printed tiles. They did a pretty good job of breaking it up in a way that kept it entertaining but it's still repetitive but in the end you have something truly interactive a conversation piece and artistic uh, it's on a huge technic track with pieces with cool technic pieces that i've never seen before so i guess that was that made it really more entertaining it's just how um intrigued i was by the technicalities of the technic <laughs> as you can see the tv is low tech brand it's pretty framed and bulky again i feel like this tv is like two almost two inches like it wouldn't be able to play mario but we have one speaker on this side. These are backward facing plates, all one by ones. I did my best. The instructions literally tell you to put them all on there randomly and then straighten them out with your hand or a, a flat edge of a table or something. Um, that, that's cool. Because that's the knob is connected to a small technical thing on the inside that makes it click. See, like that. That is easily skippable. They didn't have to do that. They chose to add this little detail and make it the, top, the knob turnable and make a little sound that just sounds like you're doing something actually in the on the mechanics of the TV. More, lots of more prints um, that old TVs used to have these things. Brightness, uh, sharpness is that, contrast. I guess you would turn these RGB so it would display color. Coming around to the top, it's just all tiled off again with those eight by eight tiles. And then this, um, plate is where mario let me try so after taking off one of these tiles you can easily pop this one off and then you can see on the top that exposed is the place where mario would stand the electronic mario and as you twist it little colors come up and that correlates to something specific so this one might be the mushroom and then let's keep going as you can see there are more going in the back there here's a red one correlating to a shell and then a yellow one for the coin so yeah so cute i wish i had the mario in fact i'm probably gonna get it now the marketing is working i want that one now to play with this set and then i'm gonna probably get my super mario sets to build a level and stuff oh that was a missed opportunity let me take the tv off so this is one huge structure here is the stand it's pretty simple it's in dark nougat it's built upside down um, just lots of pyramid slope pieces and then little black feet at the bottom. Simple enough. Oh, and then just little curves here to kind of guide the TV into place. 
the TV bars at the bottom actually go. So these gray bars, you add them at the very end actually. And they slip on the outside of these. So I kind of like that you can see some of the technique here just exposed. It kind of just touches the floor or the stand. Um, you can see there's plenty of gears, but it was not challenging. You just have to be kind of careful. And they do have little guide pictures and in instructions to make sure that you're just putting everything right. It has a rounded black base. And this side is reminiscent of both sides and the fact that they're built up with lots of tall, huge, um, what do you call those, wall elements, wall building elements. Here's the one other sticker on an 8x8 tile. It just has actual serial information for the TV. I think that's such a cute detail. And again, adding to the realism and just the amount of detail even on the back. You know, people are not gonna be staring at this, um, but when you do pick it up and look at it, you get detail. Again, here's the audio video. Okay, so they would literally connect. More vintage I.O., some vintage I.O. here, some little things. This would probably be the power or this one or something. Actually, yeah, I don't know. Um, and then again, there's that hump. There's that profile, which is built so accurately with the little pyramid bricks against this side. It's just like the other side. And there's a little antenna up there. You go. there's an antenna if you want. It tucks away nicely. It has a C-clip on this side to snap in. And you can even uh, rotate it and enjoy your show and when you're not playing your NES. So this set, I promise you, I can keep talking about it for, okay, moving on forever, but I had such a good time building it. I learned a few techniques, the number of Easter eggs, the amount of care in detail, the fact that there's only three stickers on the most detailed things. It's good vibes, nostalgia effect, period. Almost speechless. Again, five stars is the perfect set. It's probably, you know, gonna be my favorite, one of my favorite sets for a long time. Oh my god, I didn't even talk about the time and stuff. Let me talk about that right now. Stats for Nerds at the end this time. It took me 5 hours, 3 minutes, and 9 seconds to build this set. On over a period of 8 building sessions, giving me a seconds per piece of 6.87, which funnily enough is the same exact seconds per piece as Boba Fett's throne room. The average amount of time per stage that it took me was 14 minutes, 26 seconds. And the average amount of time I spent per day was one hour, 15 minutes. So I spent a pretty even amount of time each day. Thank you so much for coming to the library. Do you have this set? Have you played Mario Bros? Do I have to play Mario Bros? Are you a fan of Nintendo? Are you a Nintendo hater? Leave it all down in the comment section below. I would love to have a conversation there. And may the force be with you.